What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having a fantastic day today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in a recent interview with David Vondahar, yes, the goat from Treyarch that obviously just recently left, it was a lot of good information in there that personally I believe exposes the truth about Call of Duty and why the community is going through what we are personally going through. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, before we go ahead and dive deep, if you are interested in more content just like this, don't forget to go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell. It posts daily here at 8 in the morning Eastern time. And if you are interested in any other content, like my live streams, I do that pretty much daily over on Kick. Tuesday, actually, I will not be live, but we will be back on Wednesday to go ahead and try out the brand new season, make content about that. So if you want to see my first initial impressions of the season, see the content, so on and so forth, you can tune into that stream. Usually it goes live around 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time, and you can find a link to that channel down in the description of this video. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, for those who don't know, David Vondahar basically went off and has formed basically a new team, Bullet Farm, which is his main team. He's not going to be working with, you know, thousands of other developers and working on a massive project. No, he is going to be the main top dev of a team of what, like 14 to 15 individuals. So it's going to be a massively, massive different experience and environment for him. But again, it's going to be a fun challenge and I'm excited to see what he's going to go ahead and produce. But again, within this interview, which of course I'll leave a link to that down in the description of this video, he says a few things about you know, joining this team, why he wanted to go ahead and, you know, join Bullet Farm and lead it. And, you know, a few other good points, which again, you guys can read up on. But I want to hyper focus on a couple of points that I think will bring some light to why the Call of Duty community is struggling so much and why we can't get a game that, you know, we've been begging for year after year after year. And also why I personally believe Sledgehammer Games is doing so much for the community as well. But before we actually go ahead and dive deep, let's let, let's actually discuss what he said in the interview. First and foremost, when you get too big, when you get so big and so popular and so much money at stake, it just gets complicated. Vondahar continues, the best experiences I've ever had making games were the smaller things that got made inside of those larger games. That was what was really fun. That's when I was alive and the team were alive. That's when you got the innovation. That's when people would want to work extra hours. They would want to do things. They would do so because they wanted to, not because they had to or were told to. That's how you should make games. That's the fun part. Can you make a whole game that way? We're going to find out. He goes on to also say, I thought I would just make Call of Duty and then I would retire and you know that would be the end of my career. And I think I'd be pretty happy with that. It's not a bad career, right? But when you get to be 18 years of making a game that's franchised in that way, that goes on that long, what you can do to that game gets harder and harder to do because it's so big and popular for a reason. You can't demolish the things that people like about it. You can only do so much different within something that big. I want the whole game to be different, not just a little bit of this and a little bit of that, this game mood or that mood, right? Now, these two statements from David Von de Haar, to me personally, exposes exactly why COD is going the direction that it's going, and also why I believe that Sledgehammer is doing the things that they are doing within Vanguard, and also, you know, as you can see here, Modern Warfare 3, and also in the middle of the life cycle of World War II. I personally feel, and again, it's not factual, I'm not saying, yeah, the developers behind the scenes are doing this, this, and that. No, this is all personal opinion off of reading what I just read from David Vondahar, but I feel like a massive portion of developers within Infinity Ward and Treyarch are simply getting tired. A lot of them have been with this franchise since the beginning, and if not the beginning, at least during the, you know, the prime OG experiences, they made this game that we love, and it's true, you know? Back in the day when it was being formed, you know, slowly becoming Call of Duty, you know, one of the biggest well-known names out there, it was more innovative things they could do, you know, tiny things here and there that they could implement into the game and mess around with and tweak and adjust, you know, while Call of Duty was building itself. Right. And that was the fun stage of COD. But now we are in the stage of where it is one of the most well-known franchises out there. People know COD. They expect something out of COD. And there's only so much that can be done to it. Right. It's no longer their baby that they're you know, growing up here and they can tweak and stuff of that sort. No, it's no longer that. It is an established franchise now that causes burnout because the amount of creativity that goes into COD is no longer there. You know, as much as it used to be back in the day, and if you stretch it too, too far with creativity, the community snaps. We've seen it time and time and time again. Honestly, I wouldn't mind bouncing 
back and forth between jetpacks and stuff of that sorts. But, you know, doing it three years in a row, you could tell the community got extremely sick of it. You know, only a little variety is needed, not a tremendous change of atmosphere when it comes to COD. And same thing with a lot of other features as well, you know. The community is up in arms when, you know, certain things like the minimap and dead silence aren't reintroduced into games. You know, 150 HP, when that was first introduced by Treyarch and Black Ops 4, people were furious. I can't even tell you how many people wanted it reverted. It was so bad to the point where David Vondahar actually had to come out and say they are not changing it. I mean, I think people forget these things, but it's true, you know. Change within Call of Duty nowadays is hard because once again it's established and they have to pick and choose like the health not bad you know even though people complained about it it was something that could be adapted but if they completely change call of duty and turn it into you know a attack shooter people are not going to be happy and that's the road that we are currently going down right now Vaughn's second statement here really puts a huge emphasis on it i'll read it one more time for you guys because <laughs> i think it's extremely important I thought I would just make Call of Duty and then I would retire, and that would be the end of my career. And I think I'd be pretty happy with that. That's not a bad career, right? But when you get to be 18 years of making a game that's franchised in that way, that goes on that long, what you can do to that game gets harder and harder to do because it's so big and popular for a reason. You can't demolish the thing that people like about it. You can only do so much different within something that big. I want the whole game to be different. Not just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. This game mode or that game mode, right? You have to understand, when these developers are here for so freaking long, it gets tiresome tweaking tiny, tiny, tiny things. But again, that's what the COD community wants. That's what we crave because that is Call of Duty at this point. Again, it's an established game. But you can't have a established franchise with developers who have been around since the beginning, even though you would think it would be really good, right? You would think it would be really good, but at the end of the day, they get tired. They get burnt. It's rough. And maybe if they take a break, go make something else, and then come back into the scene, it could be something great. You know, like look at X to Five, for example, you know? Uh, Mark Rubin's back into the scene. He wants to, he's craving, he has, a, you know, a passion to design something of that sort, and it's turning out to be really fun. But when you're there the whole time and you're still there working on COD, you don't want that anymore. And we see that within these games sometimes, like Infinity War titles, you know? Infinity War titles is not like your classic, you know, I don't want, I hate calling it tactical because it's not tactical. But back in the day, Modern Warfare, you know, Call of Duty 4 through Modern Warfare 3 were way different from, you know, World at War to Black Ops 2. There were slight similarities, but you could tell the gameplay differences. You could tell that Treyarch was a lot more fast paced with their titles and wanted more engagements, more action. Whereas Infinity Ward was a little bit more thoughtful. They wanted you to think and, you know, want to position yourself a little bit more than just, you know, blatantly charging at people even though it was still an option but nowadays infinity ward is different they don't have any of that you know rushing ability as much as they used to back in their previous titles where they would give you perks and attachments and things that you can utilize to give you that ability nowadays they want to strictly force you into that tactical play style they want their game to be simply a tax shooter you know i always think of rainbow six siege but a little bit more arcadier and again, not bad. You know, there's definitely an audience for that out there. There's definitely people who enjoy that. But for Call of Duty, it's a reason why people are up in arms because it's changing way too much. And you could tell just by simply who's leading the teams. The majority of them are tired of the game. They don't even play Call of Duty. They literally do not play Call of Duty. They play things like World of Tanks and other you know, stuff out there. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying it's anything wrong with that. They can enjoy what they enjoy. But simply put, they don't enjoy Call of Duty. You know, it's as easy as that. And when they're making a COD game, they're not thinking about COD as much anymore and what it should be. They're thinking about a different vision of what they're currently playing. And they want to innovate different things that are a little too far off for a Call of Duty title. And that's the situation that we're currently in. That's why we're struggling so much. You know, it sucks to say that maybe we should get some more new devs, but it's the truth. I mean, look at Sledgehammer Games, for example. They had a complete shift in management when it came to Sledgehammer Games in the middle of the life cycle of World War II. Right after that point, World War II caught a massive overhaul, making it a much more enjoyable experience than it was before. Then Vanguard comes out, which they literally changed the majority of Modern Warfare 2019, you know, into obviously a better form. They didn't completely change things that we wanted, but they did try to find a middle ground with the community with the time that they had for Vanguard, because you gotta remember the, you know, that game was basically, once again, deals all the Sledgehammer 
Sledgehammer. Sledgehammer is used as a support studio at this point. But they're a good team. They really are because, again, they care. And with the time that they're given, they always try to do what's best for the community. But they always get the, the crap end of the stick because they don't have enough time to put together a really solid project. And it usually ends up looking and feeling like DLC, less passionate, not as creative, and it just dwindles out, you know? But they always care, you know? And same thing with Modern Warfare 3 here. They did everything the community asked for. And it's rough because, once again... Everybody in the community just considers it's DLC, and I can't blame you guys. I literally can't blame anybody for looking at this game and saying, I don't want to buy it because it looks like DLC. It feels like DLC. It's too much remastered content, so on and so forth. I can't blame anyone, but I can always acknowledge the fact that Sledgehammer did pretty much everything the community asked for, and they're still doing right at this current date. They are still pumping out work for this game. By, by season one, or not even season one, before season one, like they don't care about multiplayer anymore. And that goes for Treyarch as well. I know we always give Treyarch so much praise, but again, Treyarch knows how to make a good foundation, a good game at start. But every single time during the life cycle of the game, we can't pretend like they don't come, you know, simply drop off multiplayer as well. Black Ops Cold War, Black Ops 4, a lot of these games had problems from the beginning of the game through the middle of the game and finally got fixed up near the end. Modern Warfare 3 was fixed within the first couple of weeks when it came to the meta, you know, and a lot of other problems as well. And yeah, there's still issues, but again, they care and they've, they hyper focus on the community. And I believe they do that because it's just a new team of fresh individuals, fresh minds, people who are excited to dive into Call of Duty, people who are really pumped to play Call of Duty. Like I personally play with some of the devs behind the scenes who work at Sledgehammer. They play COD. They literally play Call of Duty. They play their own game. They play Modern Warfare 3, right? And again, like I said, something still slipped past, <laughs> you know, like the swarm issue that's still going on. But you could tell that these issues, these problems that we had for three, four, five years in the making that are being resolved now, you could tell that they played enough to notice that it's a problem and that they you know, care about Call of Duty a bit more than some of the other people who are developing this franchise. And again, it all comes down to just simply burnout. I'm happy for David Vaughn. I'm happy he's moving on to a different team that he can explore his talent and explore his creativity he deserves it but i feel like more top tier developers who have been you know working on call of duty should do the same as well and bring in new talent new people who love cod gotta think there's people who've been playing cod since the very beginning who have gone to school for game design and game development and stuff of that sort of man like uh, there's like call of duty's been around for that long yes it has been around for that long that we can indeed get people who love call of duty to death to work on these titles and I feel like that should be a huge, crucial point right now for Microsoft when it comes to a hiring process for any of these teams. Or at least, you know, tell the, the leads of these teams like Infinity War, Treyarch, and Sledgehammer to hyper-focus these people. Because that's what's going to make us a good COD game. People who enjoy COD. And you could tell just by simply looking at Sledgehammer. Like I said, the second they changed management and they ch shook up the house at Sledgehammer, they have been literally listening to the community like no tomorrow. So... I don't know. It's just my idea. You guys can go down in the comment section and leave your opinions down below. Am I going crazy? Do you think it's a stupid concept? And let me know what you guys personally think about this overall statement here from David Vaughn. But I really do think that burnout is real and that a lot of the OG people who've been around for a long time should probably go and just explore different options instead of trying to incorporate that type of stuff into the Call of Duty scene. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed today's video, leave a like. If you hate it, leave a dislike. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. I post daily at 8 morning Eastern time. And if you want to catch my streams, you can find a link to my kick channel down in the description of this video. It usually goes live around 1 to 2 p.m. Eastern time. As always, thank you for tuning in. See you all next one. Peace out.